folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to talk about is red and near infrared light safe for the eyes? If we're using a, a you know a decent powered panel, you know pretty much the standard panels that that we see all over the market, is that direct exposure to the eyes dangerous? Is it safe? Is it beneficial for the the eyes? Or should you wear uh, glasses or goggles or, or protect your eyes? You know, these are important questions. And, uh, you know, these questions seem to be coming in more and more frequently. So, you know, I've, I've done a couple of blogs to address those questions and uh, make sure people understand what, what's the thresholds for safety and what they can do if they're concerned. Um, so, you know, we're just going to summarize some of that info. So the key is, you know, should we be exposing our eyes directly to red and near-infrared light. Um, and that's kind of a weird thing for me because when I started in this business a couple years ago, uh, that wasn't really much of a question. You know, we had uh, Juve, we had Rejuvenator, uh, and then myself came along, and none of those three companies, uh, we weren't providing eye goggles or glasses with our products. and. Uh, the only guidelines we were saying about eye safety was um, not to stare directly at the lights for prolonged periods of time. You are advised to kind of just look off to the side. So that way your lens isn't concentrating that light uh, onto your, your retina. So that's the key. So you just don't want to stare directly at the light for prolonged periods of time. You want to kind of look off to the side. If you close your eyes, then a lot of the light is being reflected away from your, your skin, because we've talked about that. Uh, skin reflection can be pretty high and it protects you from excessive doses. And it diffuses the light, so it can still seem very bright as it diffuses through my eyelid and into my eye, so you still get a decent dose into the eye, and it can be quite comfortable uh, just to keep your eyes closed. So either way, that was the initial kind of advice we would give to the, give to the market. And like I said, things have changed. Maybe, you know, there's a lot more people asking about red light therapy, curious if it's safe. Uh, it's becoming more mainstream. You're seeing it on Amazon. You're seeing it uh, all over the place on eBay. Um, so, you know, maybe it's just a natural curiosity. Uh, maybe it's because more high-powered panel companies are starting to include goggles with their lights. So it naturally begs the question of, well, is this thing safe for my eyes? Why are you, why are you including eye goggles? Um, you know, and even Juve's latest generation, now they're added, now they added goggles. You know, it's kind of an interesting twist. Um, and, you know, I, I've seen a few fear-mongering posts, clickbaity posts that are trying to scare you that, oh, you know, cumulative near-infrared exposure can cause cataracts in the long term. And, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff I don't really like. Um, so, like I said, I've laid out the science in some of my posts, and I feel like some people have taken my references and then twisted it, turned it into a fear-mongering post to promote their ebook or their, their products without any disclosures, and they lie about intensity anyway. Um, so, you know, I put some guidelines here. Uh, like anything, uh, even with your skin, with your, you know, people are concerned if they're, they're gonads, um, with your eyes, the dose makes the poison. Too much intensity for too long of a period of time, that creates a thermal effect. And so our eyes are much more sensitive, so we, we have to be a little bit more careful with our eyes. So we don't want to cause that thermal effect. Uh, one of the guidelines comes from the IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission. And, uh, you know, they say a safe limit of 57 milliwatts per centimeter squared for less than a hundred seconds. So, you know, let's say I have a high powered light and I'm at the right distance away to be about 57 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Tech, I mean, theoretically, I could stare at that light for a hundred seconds and it would be safe. A hundred seconds is only 1.6 minutes though. Uh, and then we think about all these panels that lie to you about intensity and they say they're 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared at 6 inches or 120 or some are claiming 160 now. And we know that's all a lie. And we know if they were actually delivering that, like if Juve was actually delivering that from the beginning, 
then a lot more people would have damaged their eyes by now. So that tells us two things. The panels you're getting are not as powerful as they say they are, otherwise you would have damaged your eyes. And, you know, there is some relative safety profile that we know, you know, at least for, you know, five years or, or so, these panels have been around and, uh, you know, I haven't ha heard much uh, complaints about, you know, eye damage. Sometimes there's eye discomfort and you need to be aware of that if you have a photosensitivity, if you get eye strain or headaches, then you might want to use, uh, you know, use some goggles or use, use some protection just to increase that comfort level for you. So you have to, you know, everyone's a, dif a different case. So it depends on, like I said, the intensity, it depends on the power, and it depends on your particular sensitivity. You know, again, you know, that's why I, I put out a blog measuring all these different glasses and goggles to tell you, you know, if, if you want to reduce that or reduce the brightness, then go, you know, you can go right ahead. Um, you know, and that's an uh, interesting point. But, like I said, people are, are trying to skew this out of control. So, so let's say we're talking about the possibility of cataracts. And, you know, I did a quick Google search of what causes cat cataracts. And resoundingly, the answer from Mayo Clinic or wherever is from UV damage, from the photochemical damage. So we know UV and even blue light has more of a photochemical breakdown. Uh, especially for our eyes. And so that's kind of the cataract development. Uh, nowhere on the Mayo Clinic did they talk about near infrared, which I would thought was odd because of all these rumors and all this fear mongering. Um, so, you know, I looked a little bit deeper as I do. The interesting things is that when I tested some uh, sunglasses, uh, you know, they say, oh, wear your sunglasses to protect you from the UV that could cause cataracts. Uh, and they, you know, and when I tested the, a lot of the sunglasses with my spectrometer, they didn't really reduce near infrared light. So they did a bad job reducing near infrared light. And that's telling to me that if, if the establishment thought that near infrared light was damaging, then sunglasses would have added more blocking on that near infrared range like they do for UV. So, you know, that tells me, you know, if, if sunglasses aren't doing it, and there's even been some rumors that uh, near-infrared from the sun, you know, maybe we need sunscreens that need to block near-infrared, that's all been debunked too. Um, so, there's, I, I came across another study on, uh, I'll post it in the links, and it says, does infrared or ultraviolet light damage the lens. And so this is a reference to uh, cataract formation and, and, you know, it seems clear from some of these studies that UV is to blame for cataracts. And, you know, some of the rumors of, of near-infrared causing cataracts comes from uh, glass blower industry. If you look up the glass blower cataract, um, it, this also references the steel industry, you know, foundries, working with molten metal and molten glass, not only do you get a lot of near-infrared, like we talked about with black body radiation from incandescent light bulbs, you get a lot of near-infrared, but you also get heat, you get convective, you know, airflow with hot, hot air. Um, so again, it's always a heat component to the danger. Um, and that's what this study sought to, to separate, to figure out. You know, let's say if we kept below some of the safety guidelines, let's say we stayed below 57 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and we, we didn't have direct exposure for long periods of time, like is common sense. Let's say, you know, with UV, a low dose exposure causes some photochemical damage. Then the next time you go out in, in the sun, you get a little bit more photochemical damage. Then the next time, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then progressively, you know, that develops a cataract, theoretically. That's the concept the fear mongers were trying to tell you that, ne that near-infrared causes cataracts. That, uh, you know, maybe the near-infrared a little bit 
absorbed into the lens, caused a little damage, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So, you know, even a little bit of incidental exposure could be unsafe. That's the picture they're trying to paint for you. But this study figured it out. And, you know, a lot of times the fear mongers, they don't do enough research. They only do enough research to prove themselves right. And they only do enough research so they can, can you know, scare you and sell you whatever product they're trying to sell you. Uh, but this, this article concludes that near-infrared is not causing any photochemical damage. They use uh, a 1,090 nanometer beam. So, you know, that's even in the near-infrared that most of us would say even causes a little bit more damage with the water absorption. Um, at a pretty high intensity, 96 watts per centimeter squared, um, for 340 kilojoules per centimeter squared. Um, and uh, it's concluded that there's no experimental evidence for photochemical effects at 1,090 nanometers that, and that the cataracts observed by uh, other authors was probably because of heating of the iris. So in this experiment, they were able to keep the temperature of the eye cool and expose it to near infrared light. They proved that there was no photochemical damage. So there's no cumulative response. It's just the heating, which obviously our body can naturally re regulate some heat. Um, so, you know, there's no cumulative response according to science, according to the current theories that would even feasibly cause the cataract. So again, if you have a very high intensity heat source, a uh, very high intensity laser, heat lamp, and you stare directly at it for a long period of time, that's bad news, but that's common sense. Don't do that. Um, so, you know, so like I said, we have to debunk a lot of scam artists as we go along in this industry. I tested all these out. You can check out my blog. Um, this is a really good one that uh, blocked a lot of red, a lot of near-infrared light. Uh, it's kind of big for my big head, kind of comfortable. So I'd say if you really want to use something, you could get this. Uh, if you want to block everything, then use kind of these rubberized, you know, fully rubber tanning goggles. Uh, if you don't have anything, use an eye mask or a blindfold. Um, and then there's some neat... Um, laser goggles that can block specific wavelengths. So these ones block near infrared, but not red. So you can get the benefits of red. And if you're really concerned about near infrared or you have some very high intensity near infrared light, uh, then you can use these. Uh, so like I said, it's always intensity dependent, dose dependent. Uh, use some practical, you know, common sense kind of safety protocols. Don't stare directly at lights for long periods of time and, you know, get, get lights that have third-party intensity measurements so you know how to use it safely and use it in accordance with dosing guidelines and you're good to go. You, you shouldn't need glasses unless you have a photosensitivity or, you know, your eyes are very sensitive to the light. You get headaches, you get eye strain. Um, you know, those are, are the big reasons why. Um, like I said, we're only talking about LEDs with lasers. You always want to take the right precautions and follow what the manufacturer says. Um, but hopefully this gives you a little bit more confidence that red and near infrared are safe for the eyes. You know, there are, are a few studies that say you get benefits for your eyes, and that's why you don't want to deprive yourself of beneficial light when you can have it. Um, but you just need to use it appropriately. So thanks for tuning in. Let us know if you have any questions or comments.